All right. I think the overarching question for this game is, how does this game impact the butterfly effect of the NFC playoff race? And that is twofold. That's for the Seahawks and the Bucks. So with the Seahawks specifically, I'm curious what you need to see out of Seattle on Sunday and over the next two months for you to feel really good about their status as an actual contender in the NFC. Where do they need to be better than they've already been in what has been a shocking season for them? I think it will be pressuring the quarterback. I think that they've, ever, across the board, they've played obviously above expectation. The young guys on the back end have been unbelievable. Gino has been a legitimate MVP candidate, which is wild and fun and great. <laughs> um, and Nwosu has been a great pickup up front. He's been their best player up front. But I, I think it will be a more consistent, sustained pass rush that will be the thing that said, okay, they could go into somewhere uh, and upset someone. What have you thought about the guys, the young guys on the back end and just what you've seen from them for the, over the first half of the season? I cannot believe Tariq is this good this fast. There was no better situation for me than saying, let's send him to maybe the finest defensive backs coach in all of football who still takes DBs every single day than sending that guy with that profile who is just the incredible Hulk somehow playing cornerback and let's send him to Pete Carroll. I thought in three years we might have something a, a bit special, you know, uh, there was a time there I thought Trey Flowers could be something because Pete had taken him and installed him through that boot camp. And it was starting to see some sort of signs of him getting there. And he just found someone a little bit better. And it's happened almost immediately. And I think Bryant has been getting slightly better. He's not as athletically gifted as Woolen, obviously. And it really should have been with those guys, right? The reverse. It's like Bryant will be will be better right away. But with, with Woolen, the ceiling will be... Uh, you know, the best cornerback in the league with that athletic profile. And really, it's been the reverse where Woolen's just been great from the get go <laughs> and is now getting better and better and better, particularly in terms of the anticipatory stuff and, you know, reading different route combinations and all the nitty gritty details. He's not just this athletic flyer who makes plays through pure athleticism or only halfway through season one. I, the, 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 the limit is just out of control. Is there anything about their offense that feels a little tenuous to you? that you think could fall off over the back half of the season? Or do you just think this is who the Seahawks are? They're just like a borderline top five offense. It, it's a tough one because I love Gino. I think everyone loves Gino. There is an element of like, will the bubble burst at some point? Is he really that's, just this? That's kind of what I'm now? worried about. Or is he just this guy? If the it, answer is the latter, that's insane. But I kind of believe it. Well, the thing that I've always believed, you know, you can go back to West Virginia, which I know is a long time ago now, and see him just break people over his knee as a deep bomber, right? That, to me, is not I can spin it. There's no question about that. It, the, the, the playmaking arriving out of nowhere and being that spry, when he just wasn't that... I know that he's telling everyone, I've been this guy the whole time, and maybe that's correct with the right coaching, but he just was not this kind of off-script creator doing Patrick Mahomes-type stuff at any point in his career, even back in West Virginia, it's not like we saw that in college and it took forever to see it in the pros. So is that sustainable? I guess I don't see why not. Um, he's shown us he can do it now. So maybe it is sustainable. I, I don't know. The, my question would have always have been if the two tackles struggled, could they have got better? But again, it's like, uh, like Woolen on the other side of the ball. They've just been good from the get-go. I don't know why they would suddenly become bad rookies when they've been unbelievable rookies from the jump. One, the area of Gino's game, I think was probably the most concerning, even when he was playing relatively well last year is he ate a lot of sacks. He was somebody that was statuesque in the pocket in a negative way. Now he's statuesque in the pocket in a positive way where he's just willing to sit in there and play within traffic and with bodies around him. So if that shifts back into a negative direction where he starts getting sacked a little bit more often and these moments where he's really hanging on to it, don't end in all of these positive plays the way that they have been. I guess that would be the thing that I'm most concerned about, but his clock and just his ability to get rid of the ball has been much, much better this year than it was last year. Oh, he's just unconscious. And now he destroys the blitz. That was always a big thing with Gino. You could just overwhelm him. And to your point, he would either start looking it down or get a bit panicky. And he was always right for two or three disaster plays a game, even though you would see the highlights and flashes of someone who could be pretty good. Now he just eats the thing up. And you don't really see, you know, when is the last time we saw someone magically decide I'm going to be good against the Blitz now eight years in the league? That doesn't happen. This is, no. this is a such well, a all of this wonderful is, story. I And, you know, got a couple guys that deserve credit. Lindsay Jones, credit to her. She pointed out that Shane Waldron deserves a lot 
of praise for what he's done this season. Andy Dickerson, who is their offensive line coach and run game coordinator, same sort of conversation. To have two of those rookies come in and for you to look at that line and have it be a positive, not even just that it's forgettable or a middle of the road group. The fact that it's an active positive for who the Seahawks are, that offensive line and the way that it's constructed, a lot of credit to that staff and to those guys for getting them to that place. Yeah, and Shane Waldron showed us this, by the way, in the first four or five weeks when he first got the job. Remember, they were doing, they were running an unbalanced line for like four or five drives a game. He was trying to do some really wacky stuff with Russell Wilson. And by week six, he was going, Why am I installing this stuff all week? And Russell refuses to throw the ball to the, the spot time <laughs> opening wide open. Pete apparently tells us that he wasn't reading the wristband or whatever was happening. But the, the signs of the Wald fence, Wald fence, how would you say that? I don't know. The Waldron offense. They were there all along. He he's he was a pretty cool play designer when first given those keys, and then I don't know what happened uh, with Russell last season. Russell but Wilson yeah, happened. Yeah, Russell happen. Wilson happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>